Greetings and welcome to the National Museum of the United States Army. I want to thank you for participating in this program. And the tour today, I'm going to focus on select artifacts that use leadership as a major theme, both on and off the battlefield. You'll hear stories from Major General Joshua Chamberlain to Sergeant William Carney, an African-American soldier who made history at the Battle of Fort Wagner. In this gallery alone, we have over 180 artifacts that tell the Civil War story from military tactics to technology to type of weapons and uniform soldiers used throughout the Civil War. And so what's really important is that these objects are connected to very strong soldier stories who contributed to the Union victory over the Confederates that preserved our nation. So let's begin the tour. So let's start at the beginning of the war. In this section called Divided Loyalties, um, in this gallery focuses on uh, the decision by army officers at the outbreak of the war, whether to remain loyal to the country or loyal to the state that they were from. Over one-fourth of army officers resigned their commission to join the Confederacy. One soldier who remained loyal to his country was Captain Abner Doubleday, a New Yorker uh, who went to West Point in 1842 and whose sword we have on display in this exhibit. This sword is a model 1850 foot officer's sword, and it was carried by Captain Doubleday during the bombardment of Fort Sumner in April 1861. Now Doubleday uh, was credited for firing the first shot against the Confederacy to begin the Civil War. So this sword is significant and symbolic in, in some way because it was on his person during that battle. And Doubleday was assigned to the forts in Charleston Harbor in 1858. And he was a New Yorker, but he found himself on duty at Fort Sumner in Charleston, serving with Southern officers of uncertain sympathies. So at the outbreak of the war, it was hard to know who was on your side or who was going to remain loyal within the Union Army. So Doubleday fought against several of his West Point classmates, including Generals Longstreet, McClaws, Anderson, and Hill. Uh, he was also a veteran of the Mexican War, so a seasoned soldier. And by the end of the war, um, he became a major general. So having this object, having this artifact on display is symbolic but also very significant because it's tied to a very important moment in military history. And another artifact I want to talk about is this 12-pounder Napoleon gun that you see behind me. One of the wi most widely used pieces of artillery throughout the Civil War. Um, this weapon, along with others, um, proved crucial during significant battles. For example, this particular tube is documented to the Battle of Gettysburg where artillery was used throughout. In fact, the Union Army fired over 33,000 rounds during the battle. On the other side, the Confederate forces fired over 22,000 rounds of artillery. So that gives you an idea of how much firepower was on during that battle and throughout the war. And having reliable pieces like this 12-pounder gun and others, the Union Army had a distinct advantage over the Confederacy. Uh, more importantly, they were able to produce guns more quickly uh, and more powerful guns as well. And being a leader uh, from a strategic perspective, knowing where to place your artillery batteries was crucial that determined the outcome of, of, of a battle or to some degree, the outcome of the war. So the piece you're looking at, uh, the gun tube itself weighed about 1,200 pounds. The carriage that it sits on weighed about 1,300 pounds. And it took about six horses to move this piece on and off the battlefield. Of course, the soldiers that you see here depicted as cast figures, they too could move this piece if needed. Uh, and each soldier had a specific role to successfully fire this artillery piece, from soldier who's loading the round to the soldier who's firing and positioning and spotting where the round is going to go. All these soldiers had to work in unison, in sync, in order to be successful on the battlefield. So soldiers who can do that, um, Union soldiers, were able to be more effective on the battlefield. So there is one story I'd like to highlight 
and it belongs to Lieutenant Colonel Alonzo Cushing with the 4th Artillery, Battery A. He was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions at Pickett's Charge, and during that charge, he led an artillery battery of six cannons and 110 men. Severely wounded multiple times, he continued to direct fire against Confederate forces. After an intense bombardment by Confederate artillery, he was left with only two cannons and a few soldiers. While directing his men to give them one more shot, he was killed by a bullet. So what that story depicts is the importance of holding one's position, not letting um, your artillery um, go down. And, you know, so Cushing's story, his bravery, his leadership, um, his personal courage uh, during that infamous Pickett's charge at Gettysburg proved um, how important the role of artillery was during the war, but also shown great leadership and personal courage by a Union officer. Another officer who led from the front was Major General Joshua Chamberlain, whose gauntlets we have on display in this exhibit case. Now these gauntlets belong to Chamberlain. He purchased them uh, for use during the Civil War. We don't know when or where he used them, but um, he was originally a colonel with the 20th Maine Volunteer Infantry. And in April of 1865, at the end of the war, uh, he was given the honor of accepting the surrender of the Army of the Northern Virginia at Appomattox. From a leadership perspective, you can argue that Chamberlain was one of the finest officers to serve in the Civil War. His actions during the Battle of Gettysburg, where he became known as the Lion of Round Top, propelled his status as a fighting general. He certainly understood the importance of leading from the front. He earned his nickname due to the brutal fighting at Little Round Top, where he initiated a bayonet charge of the 20th Maine against the 15th Regiment of the Alabama Infantry. He was wounded and continued fighting, and his personal courage certainly was shown as a military leader. And another lead I want to focus on of great merit and some controversy, depending on how you viewed his actions during the war, is General William Sherman. So let's take a look at his hat. Another leader of great merit is General William Sherman. Uh, like Chamberlain, he led from the front on the battlefield, but also he took a, had a very strategic approach to war, uh, especially during the end of 1864, during the Savannah Campaign, or what more commonly known as March to the Sea. So the hat behind me is the hat that he wore during that campaign. There he instituted what is known as a total war strategy uh, that went beyond just fighting on the battlefield. Uh, the Union Army felt that by targeting civilian infrastructure within the South was just as crucial as fighting on the battlefield. You cut off supply lines, railroads, uh, you burn buildings and farms and factories um, that would not only knock out that logistical support, but also break the morale of white Southerners in those states. And by doing that, he became vilified in the South. They hated him for what he did. Um, but he understood in doing that, it would end the war and also prove to the Confederacy that this is something that will never happen again. Uh, he's often quoted in, in books and a lot of, you know, saying war is cruel, right? And I'm somewhat paraphrasing. The crueler it is, the quicker it would be over. And there's some truth to that. Um, but nevertheless, he is, to some degree, still hated in the South for, for the march to the sea. But this hat, not only he wore it during that Savannah campaign, he also wore it at the Battle of Vicksburg in 1862 and, and in 1863 as well. And there's a great story of how this hat came into the museum or into the Army's collection. Uh, so after the march to the sea in, in late December, um, Albert Brown, who was a special officer for the Treasury, um, met Sherman and commented and had a conversation with him. And Sherman was wearing this hat. And Brown said to Sherman, you know, for such a, a man of fine reputation, you have such a shockingly bad hat. And Sherman smiled and, and quipped, well, it's, it's, you know, it's seen a lot of use. And, but you, sir, have a nice hat. Can we swap? So they changed hats. 
uh, Sherman got the nicer new hat, and Brown got this one. And so Brown kept it in the family and somehow found its way to a museum down in Massachusetts. And then in 1970, uh, that museum uh, donated this hat to the United States Army uh, down in Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, and, to the, and, and now here it is today. While this hat is important on its own as an artifact from the Civil War, it's the owner, who, you know, the person who wore it that gives it power, that gives it meaning. So General Sherman, who you know, wore this hat during you know, one of the most uh, important moments during Civil War history, the March to the Sea, um, it makes this hat even more interesting. It makes you want to learn more about General Sherman and his leadership style. For me, this flag fragment you see behind me is one of the most important artifacts in the museum. It belonged to the 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment, one of the first all African American regiments formed during the Civil War. Now up to this point, I talk about leaders and their different styles both on and off the battlefield. General Sherman, General Chamberlain, Captain Doubleday. But this story belongs to Sergeant William Carney, an African American soldier who fought at the Battle of Fort Wagner on July 18th, 1863. Now what's significant about this flag, about this artifact, was that the original flag bearer was wounded on that battlefield. Witnessing this, Sergeant Carney rushes, retrieves the flag, and then uses the flag as a rallying point to help his fellow soldiers get off the battlefield. So you have to understand that the Battle of Fort Wagner was a complete disaster for the Union Army. Of 600 soldiers who fought, 272 died. Now for his actions, for that brave leadership style, that he took on that battle. He was awarded the Medal of Honor. But more importantly, what's significant about his action was that he proved not only to the Army, but to the entire world that African American soldiers could fight just as hard, just as brave as white soldiers. So that concludes my gallery talk. I want to thank you for joining us today and for participating in all the programs during our Civil War week. Now I have time for your questions.